<clears throat> Hello everybody and uh, and welcome to another uh, Kangaroo English live class. Um, today, as you can see, I'm not at the board. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sitting at the board. I'm seated here at my desk. Um, and I'll explain why. I'll explain why very soon. But I've started a little bit early because I wondered if um, I wondered if any of you had any questions about yesterday's class about um, about the vocabulary class that we were talking about. Um, you know that's why I started a few minutes early so that I can hopefully answer any questions you you have about um, vocabulary. Um, hello to to everybody here. There's there's some students here who've been um, who've been here for a long time today. Uh, we've got Heleta, we've got Prabhaharan Velaypandi. <laughs> nice easy name, that one. Um, Edison, Mr. Saman, Dennis Ryabchuk uh, is here. Um, uh, Sai Jan, Aaron, uh, Aaron, Aaron China Fritz, Jura, uh, Lolly Lolly, uh, Geraldo Fernandez. Um, Wow, uh, Alex Silva, Ramesh, uh, a, a lot of people. Um, uh, it's it's fantastic to see you all here. Thank thank you very much for for participating in this class. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, um, so so yeah. So if you're wondering, if you're wondering what kind of what uh, what motivates teachers and and how teachers can survive doing such a difficult job um, the the answer is the answer is whiskey <laughs> no not really no the answer is passion of course it's all about the passion <laughs> um, uh, yeah so um, the same as yesterday the same as yesterday at the end of this class, I'm going to be talking to some students via Skype. So if you have Skype installed on your uh, telephone or on your computer, you can find me to search for me. Okay, it's my email address info at kangaroo like that. Just search for me and you'll find me and, and um, hopefully later on, hopefully later on we can chat. That'd, that'd be nice. Um, yes, Anna Rita, you're absolutely correct. Yesterday, I didn't notice that the volume, okay, the volume of the Skype calls was really low. So today I'm going to, to fix that problem. Yeah, so, um, well, it seems that nobody really uh, has any questions about, about yesterday's class. So that's good. So let's get started. Okay, it's it's four thirty. Let's do this. So um, the name of this class is the power of noticing. Okay, and that there was there was a guy who proposed something called the noticing hypothesis, and he said that um, noticing is one of the most important things that you can do in language learning, right? But unfortunately, his his hypothesis has never been proved. And, and one of the reasons is probably because it's very difficult to test something like that. Noticing, you're like, what exactly is noticing? Um, you know, what, what, what is it? How do we test if it works? Is it conscious or subconscious noticing? It's it's a very difficult thing to test, but we do have we do have some other science which does tell us about the importance of noticing. And actually, actually, I'm going to talk about this. Okay, this this um this is the name of the paper. Okay, it's fortune favors the bold and the italicized. 
effects of disfluency on educational outcomes. Okay, and this was published in Cognition. Now, <laughs> if if you've watched if you've watched any of my previous live classes, then you know that my my handwriting is really bad. It it might be the worst handwriting in the world, right? Maybe, um, but. What, what's interesting is that this research proves <laughs> that, that my terrible handwriting actually helps you to learn English. <laughs> so um, I've, I've been looking for an excuse for, um, I've been looking for an excuse for my terrible handwriting. And I think that today I, I have it, right? Um, <laughs> Uh, so, so let me, let me tell you a little bit more about, about this paper. So this, this paper, what they did was they, they took text, they took some different text and they had the text in a kind of normal, a normal, easy to read, uh, font, like maybe like Arial or, or something like this. And then they took the same text and they put it in, in other fonts like, Comic Sans, Comic Sans, and, um, and, uh, what else, uh, Bodoni, <laughs> right, which, which are fonts, uh, which are very, um, uh, which are, well, you can see a couple of examples here in, in the title of this paper, you can see the, for example, this is a very unusual font here, and this is also unusual, and, and what they discovered was that they discovered that when the students read text with a kind of difficult to read font, okay, when it had a difficult to read font, they remembered more of the text, right? And we need to ask why that is, okay? Now, they do explain you know why in this paper but i want to um i want to ask you the question so who here which one of you who has a theory as to why you would remember more if it was difficult to read a any any ideas any ideas i want to hear your theories about this There's a, there's a little bit of a delay, so I have to wait for you to, um, to reply. Um, okay, so, um, Dimitrio says that maybe because they pay more attention. Uh, Maria Laura Herrera says because you need to be more concentrated. <laughs> yes, I had a shower, but this is permanent ink. It doesn't come off. <laughs> Um, Lolly Lolly says, because you have to decrypt the text. Um, uh, Ma Massiege says, because we have to spend more time trying to make it out. You concentrate more, you focus more. Um, so the question was, why is it, why do students remember the text better if the font is difficult to read? Why would a difficult to read text be be better? Why? Um, yeah, so I think, so you all have basically the right idea, right? That what it does is it forces you to concentrate, right? But why? But why? Because if I'm, if I'm reading a, a piece of text, I'm reading a piece of text, Right. And if if the font, if, if I'm accustomed to the font and if it's easy for me to read, then all of my attention goes to goes to the message. Right. Goes to the to the concept. And when I encounter, when I come across something which is difficult to read, suddenly my my my. 
my kind of my fluency is actually broken. In in this paper, they call it disfluency. So you're flowing with the text, and then boom, your 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 fluency is broken. And 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 according to them, the reason that that it makes the the text easier to remember is actually because it reduces your confidence. So think about that. So it reduces your confidence. You feel less sure about what you're reading. So your brain goes, okay, focus, focus. All right. So my terrible handwriting, and this is evidence, right? My terrible handwriting <laughs> helps you to focus and helps you to learn, right? Yay. <laughs> um, and so the, the, reason, the reason I'm sitting at my desk today is because we are going to kind of, we're going to put this into action. Okay, we're going to put this into action, not by using a font, but by using our powers of concentration. Okay, what I want to do is I want to show you how you can study alone by yourself and really, you know, really, um, really learn in a deep way. It's really important. So I'm going to simulate you in your house reading some text. Now, yesterday, yesterday, I asked about what people were interested in because as, as I showed yesterday, okay, when, when we talk about things in class that, that students are interested in, then you know, that, that just engages you. Okay. So a, a lot of people yesterday said they were interested in history. So I, I just happen, I just happen to have <gasps> purely by, by coincidence, by, by miraculous coincidence, I have this book, all right? <laughs> Look at this. Whoo. I think this was my old school book from history from Australia. Okay. Two centuries, a profile of modern history. Now, <laughs> personally, I hate history. Um, I couldn't think of anything more uninteresting than history, but my job is to teach what you are interested in. You know, a good teacher doesn't focus on being in the front of class and talking about what they want to talk about, a good teacher is focused on what the student wants, right? That, that's actually what teaching is, right? So um, what I did was I chose uh, a, random, a random paragraph, okay, from this book, this, this paragraph from page 662, okay? And the chapter, the chapter is the second, oh dear, the, uh, the chapter is the Second World War. The Second World War. Um, now, my, my, my goal, my objective here is to show you how one little paragraph about history can really tell you an, an incredible amount of things about the English language. And it can also be actually really interesting. And if I think that history can be interesting, then I promise you that, that anybody can find history interesting. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to read this paragraph. Okay, so we're just going to read it. Okay, so here it is. Um, the Second World War was fought not by throwing repeated human waves against the enemy, but by men and machines. Submarines and, to a lesser extent, aircraft and tanks, had been used in the First World War. But in the Second World War, battles were largely decided by tanks, motorized troops, heavy artillery, submarines, anti-submarine craft, aeroplanes, and aircraft carriers. 
machines both widened the front of battle and gave warfare a new mobility. Using air-supported ship-borne invasions, Japan extended its sway over a vast area of the Pacific. In 1940, exploiting the speed of the tank and motorized infantry, Hitler's generals knocked France out of the war, achieving in six weeks and at a cost of 27,000 lives what had eluded the German army during four years of bloody trench fighting after 1914. Well, um, again, not the most exciting paragraph in the world, okay? Um, but let, let's, let's go in and let, let's be entertained by this because there's plenty to be entertained by, okay? So um, let's, uh, let's, just, let's just dive straight in. So let's engage our noticing hypothesis rather than rather than read this so the first the first time you know we we read this text we read this text we absorbed the message now let's 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 notice okay let's notice so i have a question okay let's look at the very first sentence and actually look that was a very bad christian see it should be capitals <laughs> um uh let's um Let's let's have a look at this this very first sentence. So, again, I'm going to try and put the put put some pressure on you. So, can anyone tell me which verbal tense this sentence is in? So, you know, let's uh, let's let's have a look at our verb here, and and who can tell me what what verbal tense it's in? Okay. Hasan kum, very good. It's in the passive voice. Uh, John Constant, no, it's not the past simple. It's the passive. <laughs> it's the passive. Um, now, it is the past passive. That's exactly right. So, the passive, we can easily identify the passive because the passive is always the same structure, okay? The passive is always to be plus the verb in the participle, okay? That is, that is the passive. It's, it's always the same. So you can see here we have the verb to be, was, and then we have the verb fought in the participle, okay? Was, fought's the passive. Now, that's, you know, a piece of grammar. That's not particularly interesting. So my question is, because this is the real question, why is it in the passive? Why not use the active? Or maybe, you know, uh, maybe subjunctive voice. Or So, so tell me why, um, why do you think this writer... Why do you think this writer would have used um, the passive voice? Okay, Hassan Kum, very fast again. Hassan Kum is because the doer is not important. Okay, uh, Anu Anu Dev says because the action is done by people. Okay, Dennis Riabchuk says we don't talk about the subject. Um, and Geraldo Fernandez says that someone is telling a uh, story. So again, watch out for that, Geraldo. It's not a history. It's a story. Okay. And, and Altamir Pagani. Hi, Altamir. It's great. It's great to see you here. Says, we don't know who made it, or maybe the writer didn't want to say it. Uh-huh. Exactly. Now, there are some very famous books about style and 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 some of the um, a lot of those books say the same thing they say you should never use the passive voice if you can use the active voice and 
you know, one of those books, for example, is The Elements of Style by Strunk and White, which is the most assigned textbook in the United States. Okay, so basically, if you go to school in the United States, then you have read that book. The problem with that book is it's pfft, terrible advice, right? It's full of terrible, prescriptivist, old-fashioned nonsense, right? Uh, thank you, Anudev. <laughs> exactly. No. Um, but, and in that book, they say you should use the passive instead of the active. Why? Because, because of the exact reason that, that Altamir and, and other people have said. Because there's this idea, there's this idea that the passive voice is for cowards. Do you know what that means? For cowards? For chickens? For people who are weak and pathetic and afraid? Because, because when we use the passive... We don't put any responsibility on the subject, right? So here, if, if we look at our text, right? We look at our text, the Second World War was fought, right? Now, the question is, who did the fighting? Well, you could say, you could say, for example, you know, the Americans, the British, the Germans, the French, da-da fought the Second World War, we could do that. Or we could say, you know, people fought the Second World War. But it's, it's not elegant, is it? It's not elegant because there's too many different subjects, right? So here, in this case, the passive voice is not cowardly. The passive voice is not, you know, is not because you are afraid to say the subject it's because it would be it would be inelegant and it would be um confusing and 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 long to use the subject so actually and this is one of the reasons that strunk and white you know were wrong is that using the passive voice here makes it more elegant not less elegant right so that's something for you to think about, okay? That's just here in um in in this um in this first sentence. Now, again, we've paid we've paid attention to just one little thing. We we've noticed one little thing, but we're learning, right? We're asking questions. We're asking. You know, that's that is part of noticing. The ancient Greeks who who I admire a lot you know, they were the first people to, to take the idea of kind of, you know, noticing and paying attention and asking questions. You know, they were the first people to do that systematically, right? And that's what you need to do, okay? If you want to learn a language, you need to develop curiosity, all right? You're reading this boring history text and you say, why? All the time. Why? 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 Develop your curiosity about language and... All right. Okay. So, um, okay. Now, now, again, let's go back and we're going to look at another, at another thing here. Okay. This, this little part here. The Second World War was fought not by throwing repeated human waves. Now, can anyone tell me what is strange about this, this, this word order? Who can tell me? Who can tell me what's a bit strange about this word order here? Okay, Saeed Jam, very good. Um, the word order is not normal, right? It's not normal. As Saeed is saying, and as Chaminda is saying, 
and Amin, and also, um, yeah, and also Nick Smith. The word order is not the typical word order in English, in modern English. Okay, so in modern English, uh, it would be more natural to say, I would put the not here in this position. I would say, was not fought. All right. The Second World War was not fought. Okay, but no, the writer, the writer decided to put the word not after the verb. Okay, so again, I'm going to ask you, why would the writer do that? Why would the writer break this, you know, kind of fundamental rule of English grammar? Why, why would they do that? Let's, uh, let's ask. Let's ask why. Lolly Lolly says it's for emphasis. This order emphasizes the phrase. Exactly. To emphasize the word throw. Right? Lusa, Lusa, yes. Oh, Luther, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's a matter of style. It's more elegant for emphasis. Exactly. So, so think about it. Actually, the reason that the author changed the word order is the same reason that a difficult to read font makes you remember more. Because imagine you're not, you're not paying attention, you're sleeping, right? And you're going through the sentence and then, whoa, wh wh wait a minute, the not is here? Suddenly that not becomes really powerful. Right? You're like, wow, okay, not, not by throwing repeated human waves. Okay, so yeah, it moves that emphasis onto the not. Great work, guys, you know this. And again, we're paying attention. And it means that next time you're, you're writing a sentence, maybe, maybe you will do that. You'll try it. Try it out. Experiment. Okay, now uh, let's um, let let's have a look at um, at the next uh, at the next sentence uh, here. Now, it actually is there. So it's it's quite a big sentence. This one, right? We've got a big sentence with um, with lots of lots of nouns separated by commas. Right? Nouns separated by commas. Now, the first word here is submarine. Okay, now, <laughs> oh dear, we have our first troll in the chat. <laughs> uh, no, okay, how do I get rid of this user? Um, hide user on this channel. Okay, goodbye, sir. It was nice having you, not. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Um, so, l let's look at this sentence. So, the first word in this sentence is submarine. Oh, submarine. Now, I, I like to, I like to, to, to look at a word. And again, I like to ask why. Okay, so, and I know and I know that this is very, maybe a very kind of stupid question, right? A very childish question. But who can tell me why it's called a submarine? <laughs> right. Again, I, I, I'm sorry if this seems like a stupid question. Submarine, right? Um, uh, because submarines are new in comparison to the First World War. Okay, so uh, Globus Pallidus says um, that sub means under, right? So we have under the water, right? That's um, exactly, it's really transparent and really clear, right? So we, we know that sub means under and marine means water. And so then, you know, we know that, that we have these two parts of the word that we can, you know, use for other things. You know, we have... Um, colors like aquamarine. We have, um, you know, marine animals. The place where you uh, put your boat is um, 
is in a marina, in a marina. Um, okay, all these things. Now, if we're interested in history, we're also interested in the history of submarines, right? I mean, why not? Why not take one word and let's go on a little journey? So, who can tell me what is the name of the of the thing that they fire from a submarine? Who can tell me what a submarine fires? Okay, so Danilo says it's a missile. No, missiles are above the water. They are... Ooh, what would it be? I don't know. Um, above... Uh, uh, over marine? <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. So yes, there's there's lots of people who know um, who know what the word is, and um, the word is <laughs> Globus Pallidus says it's a big bullet. Well, uh, yeah, big bullet. Um, Susanta Poda says a uh, projectile. Great word. Love that word. So projectile is more something which kind of flies, like in general. You know, like a, so yeah, a torpedo is a type of projectile. A bullet is a type of projectile. A rocket is a type of projectile. It's a bigger category. So, okay. So we have this, we have this great word torpedo. And, uh, and again, because this word is from Latin, it has a Latin, it has a Latin um, root, right? Uh, and this same Latin root gives us the English adjective torpid. So I have a question. I don't know if any of you are have this word in your vocabulary. Who can tell me what the word torpid means? Who knows what torpid means? It's an adjective. An adjective. It's a great adjective. From Latin, yes. Maybe, maybe everybody's on their telephones right now. What does, what does torpid mean? <laughs> uh, impulsive? No. Bad? No. Ooh, Susanta Poda says torpid means sleeping. Ooh, very good. Lolly lolly, indolent. Ooh, great word. Hassan Kum says lazy. Uh, physically inactive. Luther says numb, paralyzed, slow. Okay. Th that is actually the meaning of this adjective in English. Torpid means lazy and slow. So, this, this brings us to ask a question, right? Why would a torpedo, which is something very fast, and very explosive, how could that be related to the Latin word, which is actually means something lazy and slow and numb? Does anybody have any ideas about, um, about the possible explanation for that? So Gosha says, because it's in the water. Ooh, because it's in the water. Ah, so there's no sound. There's no sound. Diego says maybe it's figurative. Right? Figurative, right? Um, it's slower than other projectiles. Um, okay, because it's, it's not lazy, but the water is very dense. Well... I think that the, the theory is good, right? Like, I can see how it's under the water, so it's slower than a normal, a normal, maybe a rocket. But the true story is actually much more strange, okay? <laughs> so, um, in, in, um, in the world of submarine animals, there is an animal called an electric eel, okay? An electric eel is a, 
is an eel, right? It's like a like a snake thing, right? And it lives under the water and it kills its prey. Remember yesterday we had predators and prey, okay? This electric eel, it kills its prey by electrocuting them. Right? And actually, it's a very powerful electric shock. Electric shock. Now, what happens to the prey of an electric eel? Well, the prey of an electric eel, if an electric eel attacks you, then you are lazy and sleepy and numb, right? So the reason it's called a torpedo is actually because it's like an electric eel. Not because it's slow and lazy. Because when that torpedo goes in, it immobilizes and makes the target destroyed and, and destroyed. So, And the name was given by the, uh, by the American guy who invented the torpedo. Although his torpedo didn't work. There's another... See, that that's a whole story about, in history you could read about the, um, about the development of the torpedo, right? So, now, <laughs> I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm not telling you this because I have a great interest in history, especially the history of torpedoes. But, I'm trying to show you that by asking a question about a simple word like submarine by just asking questions you can learn some really amazing stuff about language you've got a new ad adjective torpid and you'll you'll remember that because of torpedoes and you know you also know about electric eels so <laughs> Gosha says that in the morning she's a torpedo. <laughs> Me too, Gosha. I'm this morning. Oh man, I was such a torpedo this morning. I actually, I've I've been trying to 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 eat better because because <laughs> like even even when I was younger. My, um, my, my family, when, when we, when we sat down to eat dinner, my family would say, damn Christian, why are you eating so fast? Is there a taxi waiting for you? And I, and I think, I think the reason that I, that I, that I eat fast is because, you know, I just want to eat and so I can do things. I want to eat and then I can, I don't know, go and work. I'm a little bit obsessed with work, so... This morning, <laughs> and I, I don't know, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should admit this uh, on the internet, but this morning my breakfast, <laughs> my, my, my breakfast was uh, chocolate, these chocolate cakes things and, and a, <laughs> a glass of whiskey. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's Wednesday. <laughs> It's Wednesday. Oh. Um. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so um by the way, by the way, that's not my normal breakfast. Just you know. Um uh Okay, because because I don't want to um because I don't want to, you know, uh talk too long about about this uh because we've this class has already been 38 minutes so far i just um i just want to show you <laughs> show you one more thing which which i think is quite quite interesting okay um and something that i think is important to talk about so let's let's have a look at this um let's uh let's let, let's have a look at this 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 little sentence here okay so Using air-supported ship-borne invasions, Japan... Let me just... Um, so, so this is the final sentence we're going to look at, okay? Before we, before we, we move on to Skype. So, the, using air-supported ship-borne invasions, Japan extended its sway over a vast area 
of the Pacific. Okay. So first, I want to talk about this. Air supported and ship borne. Now, who can tell me what's interesting about these? Oops, I meant to highlight all of that. Who can tell me what's interesting about these two adjectives? What's cool about them? Why are these adjectives cooler than my breakfast? <laughs> Air supported, ship borne. Okay, so born is an interesting an interesting word. We're going to talk about born in a minute. Okay? But I'm specifically thinking about the form of the adjectives. So Zyxel B says that they're split. Okay. But Okay, Chaminda Seneviratna. Ooh, I feel I feel quite proud of myself for for pronouncing that name. Uh Chaminda I want to say it again, Chaminda Seneviratna. What a great name. Um because they are connected with a hyphen. Right? So these are called compound adjectives. Let's talk a little bit about these. Okay? Compound adjectives. And what we do when we use this, this hyphen, let me just uh, scroll up a bit here. When we, when we use this hyphen here to connect air and supported, we use the hyphen, okay, the little hyphen becomes like glue. It joins together those two words and temporarily those two words become one word with one meaning. And I'm going to show you why this is important. Okay, so let me write two, two possible things. Okay, we have a... Um, whoops. Uh, okay, so let's let's have a look at uh, at this, right? Here we have a French style teacher, and we uh, <laughs> God, uh, <laughs> we have a French style teacher, and we have a French style teacher. Now there is a massive difference between these two between these two sentences, right? A massive difference, okay? So, in the first one, both of the adjectives, the, the adjective French and the adjective style, they independently modify the noun teacher. They independently apply. So, it's a teacher of style. So, it's a teacher who teaches style, I need a style teacher. And it's also a teacher who is French. Right? They're, 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 so they're, they're a French teacher and they are also um, teaching style. Right? But this one here at the bottom is completely different. We have a teacher who teaches in the style of a French person. It's a French style teacher. Really big difference. The hyphen... Okay, the hyphen is not a question of style, it's a question of meaning, really important. And I want to remind you that, like with, with all, um, you know, with all punctuation, with commas, with hyphens, with brackets, with all of this stuff, it's, not a, it's normally not a question of right and wrong. Okay, most of the time... It's not right and wrong. Most of the time, it's a question of helping the person who's reading your text to understand. That's what, that's what punctuation is. You're helping me. When you have good punctuation, you help me. For example, you know, when I'm reading this about, about the French style teacher, you're helping me to understand that the two adjectives you know, are one thing. And here, you know, all of these in this sentence here, 
all of these commas, you know, all of those commas help me to separate, you know, those, those words. In my mind, I pause, right? Submarines and, to a lesser extent, aircraft and tanks. Now, there's no law, you know, there's no, um, th there's no, there's no um, book from the English Academy that says, you must place commas in, no, it's, there is no book, okay? There's no right and wrong. You put the commas to be, to be nice to me, to help me, right? I'm just, I'm just going to give you one more, one more example um, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a situation, right? That might be, um, right? So you can see how this, an old furniture salesman, is very different to that. You can see how one of them is, you know, a salesman who's old and sells furniture, and the other one is a salesman who sells old furniture and we don't know we don't know how old he is big difference okay and so that's oops so so that's that's interesting okay and again we're just we're asking questions why is it like this why do we have a hyphen curiosity now um so again this is the final sentence i'm nearly finished and then we're going to go to Skype, okay? So let's let's have a look. Let's have a look at this adjective. It's a ship-born invasion. So so let's have a look at this word "born." Who knows what it means? Can anyone can anyone tell me what it means when something is born? Lolly lolly, you are absolutely correct. Very, very fast. Born is the, the past uh, of the verb to bear. <laughs> now, so bear, bear has um, the, the word bear. There's the noun, the bear, which is, you know, which, <laughs> which is my, my wife in the morning. <laughs> And, and my and my mother-in-law 24 hours a day no no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding so so bear, bear is the noun right bear's the noun um and 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 then we have the verb to bear okay the verb to bear is basically means to carry right um and so if you think about it right we we know there's we know that there's a, a noun in English. Born right, I was born in Australia, right here. And let's think about it. It's obvious. It's related. Born because you carry the baby in your tummy. Carry the baby in your tummy. <laughs> um. Yes, Axel, Axelson, my wife will kill me, but she doesn't watch my, my YouTube videos, so. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so it, means, it means to carry, right? So now we can look at this adjective, right? We can look at this adjective here and we can say, okay, so it's an invasion. It was an invasion that was carried by boats, right? So the, the, the soldiers, the troops, the troops were carried, were carried by boats, okay? Um, and just, just out of curiosity, I'm very curious. Can you please type in, what, what is the verb in your language, in your, in your native language? What is the verb born? Could you, um, could you type it in for me? I'm very curious to see the verb in, in all of the languages we have here. Okay, so in, uh, yeah, we can see in, um, in uh, nacer, nacer, 
I hope that you are all noticing a kind of pattern here. Um, NATO, uh, NAITRE, uh, well, apart from, of course, when we, when we move over to the Cyrillic, kind of, we move over to the, to the kind of Russian kind of zone, things, things change a bit, but you can see here, if you look, you can see we have NASE, NASE, NATO, NATO, it's obvious that we have a similar, a similar, um, root, right? We have a similar word origin and and actually there is an adjective in English that, that we have that's a real adjective that's quite, well, not common, but not common, but it's nascent, okay? Nascent. And it means something which is like being born, something which is being born, right? So I might say, for example, um, uh, let me think of a new company. Uh, imagine, imagine there's a new company called uh, Kangaroo. <laughs> Kangaroo English is a nascent company, right? And what that means is that it's a company which is being born. It's in the early stages of its development. It means the same thing. It means the same thing. So, again, we're asking why. We're curious about language. We love language. <laughs> okay. Um, now, I don't, I don't want to talk about any more vocabulary, but I do want to show you something quite funny. Okay. So, here you can see we're talking about the Pacific Ocean, right? So let's have a look at uh, Google Maps. So let me just bring this up here. Google Maps. Okay, Google Maps. Google Maps. And I can type in Kangaroo English. Okay, which is here in Orense. Look, there it is. And you can see here, I can zoom in, I think. Yeah, here we go. Look. Wow, I've got, I've got five stars. I've got five stars on Google Maps. Woohoo. I'm so happy. Now, just out of curiosity, let's have a look at the Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean. Oh no, the Pacific Ocean's only got three and a half stars. <laughs> People, <laughs> People are literally writing reviews of the ocean <laughs> it's got, oh my god it's quite it's quite funny if you read the reviews funny look at this, look at this. <laughs> four out of five too much water <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> look at this too blue didn't like it never going back <laughs> it's it's just water i have water at my house and then this one this one here What's the point, really? There's nothing to see. Ah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great pun. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with people rating the Pacific Ocean. All right. Um, guys, it's time to jump onto Skype. So, um, uh... Uh, my, my Skype address is uh, info at kangaroo.english.com. Okay, you can find me on Skype. And what I, what I want to do today is I want to hear your, your history. We're, we're talking about history. And I, want, and I want it to be meaningful to you. I want you to talk about something you're interested in. So... Tell me your history. It could be, um, you know, well, I don't want you to talk for 15 minutes about your history. You know, give me a short summary of your history and, and I can tell you maybe some grammar tips or some pronunciation, whatever you, uh, whatever you want. So, um, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's see, um. Let's see who wants to who wants to chat. Um, who wants to chat? What time is it? Fifteen twenty-one. So, um, 
Let's see if uh, this gentleman here is online uh, and wants to chat. Uh, so yeah, someone here wants to know the difference between no and not. So no, you use with a noun. Okay, like I have no telephones. Um, you are no idiot. Let's see here with nouns, and not would be with verbs, like or, or adjectives. I'm not happy, right? Or I am not going. Simple. So my Skype ID, info at kangaroo, Eng oops, can, 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 kangarooenglish.com. Okay, it's my email address. Uh, okay, so Vasil can't talk for two minutes. Let's have a chat to Omarelis Noriega. And hopefully... this time. Hopefully. Uh, uh, so, Omarellis isn't answering, I'm afraid. Let's see if we can talk here to uh, Lipe. Lipe Martins. Uh, hello, Lipe. Hello. Uh, I can't see your video. Do you have a video? Do you have a webcam? Yes. Uh, uh, wait a moment. I need to close the window uh, YouTube. Because okay, I have no problems. Inter interference. Yeah. No problems. Okay. Uh, I I will. Uh, I think that, uh, let me see if I can, uh, no, that's not working. Um, uh, ah, there you are, sir. Hello. Oh, no, you've gone again. Um, gone. Maybe you're going to come back. I hope you come back. All right. Uh, I turn, turn on one day, the, the video. Yeah. Um, could, you, could you watch me? Uh, no, I can't see you. I can see only the screen. You're sharing your screen with me. Ah, okay. Sorry. I, I will come back here. Sure. Do, do you want me? Maybe, maybe I'll call you back. H hang on a sec. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. This is 2019. This is, this is modern technology. You know, it's like... It used to be so simple back in the day. Uh, now it's not connecting to Lipe. Lipe, I'll try again. I'll try again in a minute. Let's see if we can talk to Marcos. Marcos Benicias Diaz Mota Gonzalez. Could you, could you have a longer name? Maybe it's the longest name in the world. Marina de Argentina means uh, is asking what is impeachment? Impeachment is the process of removing a president through um, uh, through legal uh, through legal uh, through legal means. That's what they're trying to do to Mr. Trump. Let's see if they can do it. Uh, hello, Vassil. Hello, sir. Hello, Christian. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I'm excellent. Um, where, where, where are you? I'm in the west part of Ukraine, in Chernivtsi city. Okay. Well, actually, it's interesting because now in American politics, there's a big scandal about um, your prime minister talking to President Trump and, right? Actually, I don't know because I don't uh, listen to news very often, but I know about new prime minister, about new president. It looks like they are very good team 
and it's going to be some changing in Ukraine. I, I, I hope so. I hope so. So, so tell, me, tell me about your, your history. I'd love to know something about your, your history. Okay, about, my, about myself. Mm -hmm. I'm 31 mm -hmm. and I study English. I've been studying English for two years. Um, what else? Um, I'm a network engineer here okay. in Ukraine. I've been working for 10 years network, as a network engineer. Okay. Um, but I, I used to, no, I didn't use English for my work. Okay. So, and now it's time to, to learn a little, a little bit English. It's awesome, actually. <laughs> well, and I'm really happy to listen to you, speak to you, actually, it's, you are the best teacher uh, in the world. Uh, th thank you. Thank you. And That's I very have a kind. question for you. And, and actually, I, I, no I noticed just now that when you were speaking, that you, you almost said used to, but then you changed it to, to used, right? Yeah, you, I you, 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 you were going to say, I, I, maybe you were going to say, I didn't used to speak English, but now I... Okay, yeah? yes, 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 I didn't used I, to speak English. Right. Yeah, and, and, but what you did is you stopped, you stopped and you corrected yourself. And that is, that is actually a sign that your English is really good, right? Oh, thank yeah. you. So you know when when you when you stop and correct yourself, it's it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Okay. But, but uh, I have a question. I can see you. There's a problem. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. It's because because my webcam is being used for YouTube. I can't use it for Skype. So. Okay. So not so. Pro not the problem. Um, it's fine. So, so 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 tell me a little bit about your, you know, your history, like growing up when you were younger. When I were, were younger, when I was younger, yeah, yeah. So let me think. <laughs> I was growing up in Chernivtsi here. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Okay, so maybe you have some question. Uh, can you help me? What What can I What I What can I tell you? Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, um, I'm kind of interested in maybe about, you know, and, and th this is something that you can think about if you ever decide to enter a conversation. And, and especially for students who are um, thinking about doing an exam, right, is that if someone asks you a question like, tell me about your childhood, you know, the best uh -huh. thing you can do is to just be honest and tell a story, right? And and so, um, for example, maybe you could tell me about, you know, a memory that you have from your childhood. Just a any story that comes to mind about when you were younger. When I was younger, yeah. I used to make I, I used to make a lot of bad things. Like uh, I didn't listen to my parents. I okay. used to do some kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Um, I, I used to do what I'm, uh, I wasn't allowed to do. Okay. Yes, right. And, and um, is, so you were like a, a rebel, I, right? Like a rebel. Um, okay. So I remember I used to smoking a little okay. bit. <laughs> okay. It's my secret, but my <laughs> parents, my parents uh, don't know uh, until now. I hope so. <laughs> well, so, I think I think that's normal. I think lots of young people experiment with smoking and drinking alcohol, and I think that's normal, um, really. So, what one, one thing I noticed because um, I noticed, and and this again, this is a um, this is a, a really common. Thing. I'm just going to bring this up here, is that you um, you said that when I was younger, I used to make a lot of bad things, right? Mm 
Mm -hmm. But what is the difference between make and do? I used to do. I used to make. Ah, yes, I know. Yeah, tell when me. When I say, if I say make, uh, I'm something to create, right? Like make a paint, maybe, or make some creature. No? Exactly. Right? Exactly. It's like you're creating something. Yeah. And do is more for actions, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so when I, if I say do, mm -hmm. it means I do some action like writing, um, speaking, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Awesome. So, um, so tell me about why, why did you decide to, to learn English? Why did I decide to learn English? Yeah, like why? Why did you start? Because um, it is kind of idea uh, if you have like a second language, you like start new life or something, mm. and uh, it's really works for me because uh, when I start studying English and speaking English and thinking in English, it I'm, I've noticed I something something changed, huh. right? Something get I, I feel better. I have a uh, lots of uh, different uh, emotion experiences. I can speak to different people all around the world so I can make new friends, meet new friends. That's, and that's, also that's beautiful. I, I interested in uh, uh, like globalization because English kind of global language mm. in this world. Mm. So, and I wanted to be like a part of this process. Wow. That, that's, that's that, you know, that makes me so happy because you know, if a student says to me, ah, oh, you know, I learned English because, you know, I want, I wanted to, I needed to get a certificate for work or I'm learning English because, you know, um, you, some, a reason like that, that, that always makes me sad. And then when somebody says they do it to have experiences and to understand other cultures and to, you know, that, that make, you know, that is exactly why people should learn languages, right? Right. So I'm a really big fan of English and culture of English. Uh, yeah. Difference between UK, USA, the USA, uh, Australia, uh, history about English, how wow. it used to be, how it used to be when uh, English comes to uh, countries like uh, Australia, because they didn't, they didn't speak uh, English, right? Yeah, so exactly. they had, they had uh, like their own language. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the, the story, the story of the Aboriginal languages of Australia is, is a really fascinating story. Um, because, well, because those languages have some really unique ways of the kind of looking at the world and, and also they, they have, um, well, this is something of, of kind of that I plan to talk about in the future, but but actually a lot of Australian Aboriginal languages, their total vocabulary is only maybe four or five thousand words in total. Uh -huh. And you because your 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 native language is is Ukrainian and Ukrainian. Russian. I kind of bilingual Okay. So, so you maybe. probably know it depends on your level of education, but you probably know about 40,000 words. 40, so, words. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. And and you probably know four or 5,000 words in English. Right? So, so it, it's, it's incredible to think that the total vocabulary of, of an Australian Aboriginal language is about the same as your vocabulary in English right now. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, um, do, do you have anything you want to ask me before, before I go? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How is it like to be a best teacher of the world? 
<laughs> uh, it's just... And, and the richest teacher of the world, not because of money, because of all of this, all of uh, loves you get from the students. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm just, um, you know, I, I feel really lucky that I've discovered something in my life that I'm passionate about. And I think it's, it's easy to do something well if you're passionate about it, I think. So, um, right. who knows? I was born this way. <laughs> uh, definitely, you was born for doing oh. teaching. For oh. teaching. I, I, I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, and, and I hope that we can chat on Skype uh, another time soon, okay? Okay, am I online? Actually, on YouTube channel right yes, now? Yes, you are. You are, yes. Oh, wow. hey, hello, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> uh, well, uh, thank you. I'll speak to you soon, okay? Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. See you. Bye. Wow, he was super cool. Vasil Herman. Cool guy. Super cool guy. Um, yeah. So before I call the next person, before I call the next person, um, because I know that you guys, you guys are amazing students, right? So I want to ask you a question. Why? Why would Aboriginal languages in Australia, why would they have such a small vocabulary compared to, compared to say, to say a European language? Does anybody have any ideas why that might be? Who can, who can guess? Uh, uh, so Tiago says he has no idea. Marina de Argentina says it's a more simple life. Mm -hmm. uh, because of conjunction. Because they're separated and isolated. Because they're not too talkative. Mm -hmm. um, because it was uh, ancient times. No connection to other parts of continents. Well, there's, 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 there are a few reasons, but the main reason, and this is, this is something for you to know when you're learning a language. The main reason is that they were illiterate, right? So they didn't read or write. Okay. So if you think about it, what it means is that Passive vocabulary doesn't exist. Now, it's, it's a question that people ask me every day. How, teacher, how do I convert my passive vocabulary into active vocabulary? How can I convert all of these words that I don't know into active vocabulary? Well, the first question is, where does the passive vocabulary come from? Well, normally it comes from from writing, right? Because writing is a way to store, to uh, warehouse, to, to record vocabulary permanently, right? And without this, if you don't have any writing, imagine, imagine if I have no writing and I have my, my family, right? Now, my passive vocabulary stays in my brain. I don't pass it on to my children. I don't pass it on to my wife. I don't pass it on to my friends. So the passive vocabulary disappears. And so what it means is that, you know, the, well, it tells us that really, in, on, in, on average, you know, humans don't need 65,000 words. With four or 5,000 words, we can say anything we want to say. And the rest is just, the rest is just gravy. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can talk to Lipe Martins. Mm -mm. 
Uh, let's see if Lipe's webcam is going to work. Um, Hello. I'm just waiting for his video to connect. Uh, Hello. Hello, Lipe. Hello, nice to meet you. Same. Uh, so, are you Lipe or are you Felipe? Or Felipe. Yes, okay. my nickname is is Lipe. Okay. And and who who gave you your nickname? Yeah. So who did did your friends give you this name or did your 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 parents give you this name? Yeah, uh, some some friends call me uh, with Lippy, more closer friends. But normally, uh, it's more common to call me with Philip. Okay. And and maybe if your if your mum is very angry with you, she says Felipe. <laughs> yes. No. My when my mom is angry with me is Felipe da Mata. Come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's. I I totally understand. <laughs> yeah. So 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 tell me a little bit about your history, sir. Yeah, uh, I was born in Brazil, in south of Brazil. Mm. Uh, my grandmother, uh, um, how can I say? Uh, I, I, my grandmother, I live it with my grandmother. Do you mm. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I grew up with her, mm -hmm. and I was. Uh, I have child because in that in that uh, time I I used to to play in, uh, a lot and don't in that time it don't uh, exist uh, like uh, smartphones or phones. Uh -huh. We we really play in uh, a happy playing. How can I? It's more uh, happy in that that in the okay. past. Yeah. Do, do do you feel like maybe that modern technology is making people unhappy? Yeah. Sometimes yes, because uh, uh, when uh, we don't uh, use it, uh, we don't uh, manage managing these these things. You can. You could uh, not happy and not uh, give uh, happiness for your fr friends or mm. your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so in you know in 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 any language. So in 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 Portuguese, in in French, and in English, we have words that that go together naturally. Right, so yeah. so some words just just the people who speak that language they prefer specific combinations of words, right? Mm -hmm. And you could say, I mean, it's possible for you to say that you give happiness, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's it's not natural because it's not the most common. Okay, so so actually, we would say that you make somebody happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they um, they can someone can make you happy or make you unhappy. Yeah. I think yeah. I think your English is really great, actually. So t tell me about um, tell me about your experience of of learning English. Well, I I I met, I already studied uh, before. Uh, with a uh, uh, English course mm -hmm. uh, pay yeah, when we pay but in, in that time I don't like it some I didn't like so much to to study because I I thought the English is was boring yeah but uh, yeah and now um, I have been I have been studying during about two years okay and and my teacher, I, I have a teacher uh, mm -hmm. once time for a week, 
Mm-hmm. I have uh, a video conversation with her okay. in Skype, on Skype. Okay. And she uh, give me some types to to learn English alone. Okay. And one de- one this type was you. Oh, you needed to watch the video of Kangaroo English. <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah, you can absorb a lot of uh, vocabulary, a lot of uh, uh, types. And when I started watch your video, you you give me more confidence to learn it because I I, th- I thought that I needed to pay a good course to have uh, or, or be fluent in English. Mm. But mm. now I, I, I think it, my, my thought is changed. That, that's uh, great. I can, that's fantastic. Yeah, I can, I can, I can uh, study alone and improve my English, uh, have uh, time and mm. watch a video, watch a, a type, totally free. Well, that, 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 that makes me really happy. Um, yeah. there's, there's one thing I noticed when you were uh, speaking that you said that you were um, studying, you were studying English um, during two years, right? Yes. So do you, do, you, do you see any problems with that, with that sentence, studying during two years? Studying during... Studying two during two years, because there's uh, some there's something wrong with that sentence, and and I'm just wondering if if you know what it is. Have you studied? Uh, no, Maybe. it's so it's it's not the verb. It's actually it's actually the during, right? Ah, okay. Yeah. So so and I know that in Portuguese, how, how would how would you say this in Portuguese? Uh, estou estudando durante dois anos. Yeah, exactly. So we we have the word in English during which which sounds really similar, and actually it's it's like the same the same word, but in English we use it in a different way. So during you can only use it for nouns, right? Like right. for example, during World War Two during the recession during uh during my my childhood for example but if you're talking about a duration right like for example two years then you have to say four four okay so it's actually really stupid because because in english if it's duration you don't use during <laughs> mm-hmm So it doesn't it doesn't make any sense, but you know, sometimes language is a bit crazy. Yes. Yeah. But I think I think you should be you should be really happy with your progress in in, in such a short time. Really happy. Yeah. 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 I I am. I am. Good. Good. Um, well, it was it was a pleasure to to talk to you, and and I hope that we can talk again soon. Yeah, I'm I, I'm too, and I would you like to to say for you, uh, thank you so much to help me with your your videos and continue to make it because uh, this is uh, help uh, help us a lot. Thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I'll speak to you later. I'll speak to you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Wow, another another super cool guy. Wow, amazing. Um, okay, let's see if I can talk to uh, this person here, Marlene. Gonna do one more one more call, and then I have to go. Unfortunately. Um, so so these you know these Skype uh, calls. Um, uh, hello, uh, Ma- Marlene. Uh, hi, hello. Hello, how, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Can you see me? I think it's quite dark. Let me turn on the light. Okay. Um, 
it is better now. Yeah, it's great. Uh, you have you have you have your baby. Yes, it's a quite surprise. I thought that you wouldn't see my my message. No, I did. I did. Um, ha, 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 is it a boy or a girl? I can't see. So. Yeah, it's a girl. It's my baby girl. She oh, is and, two and months old. <laughs> how how old is she? Two months. Two months. Two old. months. Wow. Almost. And what's her name? Excel. Excel. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cool. I like it. I like it. It's a great. You know, it's it's a great word. <laughs> yes, it's a it's a name. A Mexican name. Some Mayan from the Mayan Mayan name. Uh, wow. The meaning it's a uh, itself. Well, in the Mayan culture, mm -hmm. it's pronounced Ixchel, and it's the goddess of medicine and fertility. I think. Wow! Wow! That's a great story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 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 tell me, uh, wh wh where do you live? I live in Mexico, but okay. I'm from Venezuela. Uh, ah, okay. And um, well, t tell me a little bit about your your history. Uh, well, I started to learn English so, and about, I think, 20 years ago when I was a teenager. Okay. But on, I haven't, well, I reached this level, although I don't feel quite comfortable with it. Uh -huh. But I started to well, reach this level, the fluency, about two years ago because I started to practice a lot. Okay. And, um, and, and why, why, why did you, why did you decide to start practicing? Excuse me? Uh, why, why did you decide to start practicing two, two years ago? Well, because my husband and I, uh, we, we, want, we have this plan of moving abroad. Okay. And also for my career, I need to, pra uh, to, to practice, to, to learn English, to okay. read the book. Because most of the, the information, especially in the science, in the scientific field, are in English. In fact, for scientists, English is the mandatory language. Mm -hmm. So if you don't speak English or you don't write in English, you, you will be left behind. Yeah. So, so, what, so what, what is your job then? I'm a geologist. But right now, I'm a, I'm a stay-at-home mom, <laughs> but I'm okay. a geologist. Okay. So, so um, t to be honest, when I think about geology i think about just rocks and that's it <laughs> mm -hmm. well it could say you could say that <laughs> for most people is that rocks and yeah. volcanoes uh-huh and but geology is, I, for me it's more than that it's the way that you understand the history of the earth how everything was formed mm -hmm. and and it's really interesting interesting Wow. Well, tell me, tell tell me something interesting about geology. I'm 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 curious. Oh <laughs> uh, well, let's let me think. Um, for example, uh, where where you live now? It's in Spain. It's, yes. I, you live really close to the um, Pyrenees. Pyrenees. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I live I live on the same on the same latitude as as the Pyrenees. Yes. Uh, because, well, I, I'm not very familiar with the geology in Spain, but mm. the mountain of the Pyrenees, mm. it's a mountain range, and I don't, I don't remember the, the year when we, it was formed, because the, the let's see, there's some words that, that, that I don't know, that I know in Spanish, that I don't know in English. That's Spanish. normal. That's perfectly normal, of course. <laughs> the, the, Spain Peninsula, well, when yes, the, the the Spanish Peninsula, yes, the Spanish Peninsula, and I'm not sure about. I think that it crashed with the with what is now a French Peninsula, mm -hmm. but it, and this this is why this um, mountain probably was. Um, I should talk about something that I know. I'm I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I have read some more about geology in Europe, mm. but I'm more familiar with geology here. I don't. Know. I live in Baja California, really okay. close to San Diego. So well, here at what can I say? Well, there's a mountain range from LA to the south of ba the south part of Baja California, mm. and because there were a hundred, hundred million years ago, there was a volcanic island here. 
I know that because that was my that was my thesis. My thesis. <laughs> okay. But but I, I read the other day something about the Pyrenees because they have a similar. Um, um, I don't know the word. So that's something that really frustrates me when I speak English because my vocabulary in English is not as wide as my vocabulary in Spanish. Well, you know, it's actually. I'm going to tell you my observation, right? Now, what 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 normally happens with someone who who is like you, right? Who is a scientist who reads a lot of scientific, you know, journals in English, and you know what normally happens is that type of person has a fantastic vocabulary for their work, but they can't talk about other things like small talk or general conversation. But yes. I've actually noticed that you're the opposite to that, which is really surprising. Um, like, I think that you, you seem really super comfortable and super fluent talking about your kind of life in general. And then when I asked you about geology stuff, you were like, oh. <laughs> so do, do you think that's true? Probably, yes, because when I uh, talk about geology, I talk only with my Spanish co-worker, so, mm. although I read everything in English. Mm. Well, I think, you know, and, and, if, and if I was your, you know, if I was your teacher, I would say to you, well, you know, geography is something that you're really interested in, and it's important for your work, as you said, so if mm -hmm. I was you, you know, I would spend more time actually writing and 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 speaking about geology in english you know yeah i should do that but i but for that i i need to find well someone someone who also likes the subject or at least seems curious yeah well you know what what you could do and this is this is something that that anybody can do right is that you you have to remember that if if you decide to to learn english like it's really hard right and so you have to depend on yourself in a big way right and if you put if you put the kind of responsibility onto other people then mm -hmm. you know it, it, you're not going to succeed right so yeah, what i'm saying is you don't need a speaking partner to practice your 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 geology english what you can do is you can start a blog it's completely free i think google have blogs wordpress have free blogs. You start a blog and you just start writing articles about geology. And maybe zero people will read them. And maybe zero people will care. And maybe they will be terrible. But you don't do it for them. You do it for you. That, that's true. Mm. You know, something that it's really complicated for me is to write in English. I feel really insecure about it. If that, I think it's in, in all the areas, it's the areas that I have to work the most. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the only way to feel more secure is by doing it a thousand times. Yeah, <laughs> like that. you will not get more secure about writing by doing something else like speaking. Mm. Or reading or listening. Exactly. Exactly. So that would be my advice to you is to just write, especially if you think it will be good for your career. Right. Yes. In fact, I should do that. I should practice that because my plan is to start a PhD, so in English. Mm -hmm. so, your, your your daughter, she's being so good. She's just sitting there <laughs> quietly. Yeah. Say hi. Okay. She's super cute. I just wanna I just wanna squeeze her her, her little cheeks. <laughs> she's she's watching the the screen for her. This is new. <laughs> wow, it's super cool. Um, well, do do you have anything you want to ask me before before we finish? Or um... well, I will not ask you. To congratulate you because oh. I really admire your work, oh. especially because for me, I think that you are like a scientist of language. I am really enjoy all your daily digests because every day I learn something new. You said you read, you actually read papers, and I found that. <laughs> admirable it's great and the and the interviews with the people that you always invite to the to the videos it's excellent your work is excellent sir i really i want well, to congratulate you you have 
uh, what you are doing for us, for the student or around the world, is excellent. I think undoubtedly you are one of the best teachers in the world. <laughs> you are the only teacher that I have seen that actually read papers about language to go to the language, and, and that's amazing. Well, um, I, I, I don't want, I, I don't know what to say. Um, th thank you very much for your very kind words. I appreciate it. Um, and, no, thank no. you for all what you are doing for us. Thank you. I have a lot of uh, from you. Um, th thank you. Thank you very much. Well, um, uh, I'm going to say a big goodbye now to, to, to both of you and especially okay. to little Excel. <laughs> <laughs> say bye. Bye bye. Uh, well, I, I, I look I look forward to you to you sending me the link to your geology blog, okay? <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm I think I'm gonna start with a Instagram account with a small thing. Excellent, this that is perfect. I love that idea. Perfect idea. Okay. okay. Take care. I'll speak bye. to you soon. Bye, Fisher, <laughs> and thank bye, you. Bye, bye. Oh. Well, um, yeah, that was, that was, that was, she, she was, uh, well, that was awesome. Um, so yeah, look, uh, wow. We, we've been, we've been going for an hour and a half. <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, I, I'm enjoying the live classes, loving it. Unfortunately, tomorrow I can't do a live class because tomorrow I have, um, I have two interviews to do with some very exciting people. Um, but on Friday, I'll be back with another live class. So um, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. I appreciate all your love and support. And, um, and I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English, and I'll see you in class. <laughs>